to the JFK Evidence Detection Film Group, where today we're going to bust some myths and solve the mysteries of the backyard photographs of Lee Harvey Oswald, published on the cover of Life magazine in 1963, shortly after the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. One of the things that got me started on this project is something I noticed in the backyard photos of Lee Harvey Oswald which you can see inside this red rectangle. This is the uh, hair appears to be in a swept back style. By a swept back style, I mean this seen in these two images. You see the hair at the sides of the head is brushed nearly straight back, which is a style that Lee Harvey Oswald never wore in his entire life. Because of this uh, swept back hairstyle, when I first started this project, I tried to use people with similar hairstyles. Uh, I tried George and Warren Shield, I tried Jack Ruby, and of course I tried Roscoe White and a couple of others. So I tried making a composite using five different people and none of them were even close to being a match to the backyard image of Oswald and so I was getting really frustrated and about ready to just give up. But I happened to have an image of Carrie Sorley on my computer at the time, and it's this photo. And I noticed the hairstyle of Carrie Thornley, the swept back style, and I thought to myself, fine, I'll try it one more time. And I didn't really have any great expectations as far as the results, but surprise, surprise, as it turns out, Carrie Thornley was a match to the backyard composite image. Terry Thornley and Lee Harvey Oswald were both in the Marines around the same time frame and both stationed at Asugi, Japan, uh, and they knew each other. And later, after the Marines, both moved to New Orleans, where Terry Thornley was also a former roommate of William David Perry. William David Perry was charged with the murder of President John F. Kennedy by former District Attorney Jim Garrison. Uh, in the state of Louisiana. Okay, enough of the backstory. Um, for this project, I'll be using a film editing software called Paint, uh, which is a great little software. It's free. Anyone can download it at paint.net. Okay, I've opened up Paint, and I created a single blue layer. And if I erase any part of that blue layer, you get this checkerboard pattern because there's no layer underneath the blue layer. Uh, but if you notice in the uh, lower right corner of this image, you see a little box that says layers and it shows a single one layer. Now, I can add as many layers as I want to, but I'm going to add one more layer, uh, and then I'm going to colorize it and make it red. And you'll see that the uh, red image is now on top of the blue image. And Again, look at the lower the box of the lower right. You see the red layers on top. Now, if I erase any part of the red layer, the blue layer shows through underneath it. And this is what will happen if I use the images of Terry Thorn and Lee Harvey Oswald. I will, I will put Thorny's image on the bottom and Lee Harvey Oswald's image on the top of Thorny's. Okay, I've opened the image of Terry Thornley, which is going to be the bottom layer. Uh, and then I have to add a uh, second layer, which will be the image of Lee Harvey Oswald that I popped from the backyard photograph. And if you notice, when I add this image, when I move the image of Oswald, it's going to cover up Terry Thornley's because Oswald's image is on top of Thornley's. It's the top layer. So now what I have to do is <coughs> resize the image of Oswald to get it to match as closely as possible to that of Kerry Thornley. And I'll also have to adjust for a slight tilt in Oswald's head to match Kerry Thornley's. And it's a little tedious to try to imagine doing this with several different people so time it's annoying. <laughs> but anyhow, once I get the image sized and matched up, what I'll be doing is uh, using the eraser tool to erase parts of the Oswald image, uh, which will uncover parts of carrier thorny underneath. And 
Oh, little by little, a good chunk of the Oswald image is going to be erased with surprising results. I think you'll find it interesting. And on the subject of the backyard photos, I spoke with Marina Oswald on the telephone and she asked me uh, point blank what I thought about the backyard photographs. And I kind of evaded the answer because I didn't really want to get into it. Uh, I knew the images were a composite and I told Marina that, well, I have some photographer friends who think that the uh, images are authentic. And Marina says, well, of course they are. I took them. And I didn't want to get into it at that point in time. I didn't want to get into an argument or debate about it. I didn't want to piss it off. Uh, I do have plans to send Marina, June, and Rachel Oswald uh, copies of this film, along with letters. Um, hopefully, I'll get to speak to Marina again, but who knows. I don't know why she insists the photos are authentic, because they have no real value as far as having them. So I mean, they don't prove in a sense of guilt on the part of Oswald, assassinating Kennedy, or anyone else. The only real value they have is as a propaganda piece <clears throat> to impugn Oswald and point the fingers of guilt at him, and, and that served that purpose very well. And Thank you.